Well, welcome back to Daily Driving of Fummins. I have my dash apart because my screen stopped working and I needed to figure out why. My first suspicion was that it was the wires going to it were bad. Which is these wires right here. Turns out that really wasn't the case at all. Um, but I did build a new higher quality one for it, so I'll be putting that in. But while I'm at it, um, ever since I removed the original cluster, I haven't had courtesy lights after I shut off my engine, which has been rather annoying. And at the time I did it, I figured out that if I took this hot and run and start wire and put it on this one, that my uh, overhead lights would work and my vanity lights would work and my glove compartment light would work and my engine compartment light would work. So I just did that temporarily, I guess. Um, but I never took the time to figure out what the rest of these wires were for. So finally broke down, found some pinouts and a wiring diagram. And I have discovered that actually pin two, which is the second wire in right here, is what powers the vanity overhead lights that turn on when you turn the main light switch on. Um, and uh, so I'm going to try to figure out a circuit to make those things stay on after I turn the engine off for a couple minutes while I'm at it. Also decided that I kind of over having my blinkers and stuff in my screen, so put in some new little LED lights. I'll be wiring those all in and my gas gauge has been a little flaky. So I'm going to try to figure out which wire over here I tapped into for that and clean the wiring up, solder it instead of using one of these connectors. And when we get it all back together, hopefully I have just a better working dash and some courtesy lights. That would be great. And here's what I've come up with. Um, I found this little timer on Amazon, it's like six bucks. And I don't know if you can see the screen is really bright. Um, and basically what you can do is you can set it to um, stay on for a certain amount of time after you disconnect power. So you see it says 130 on there, that's 130 seconds. And I can emulate starting the truck by taking this little thing that has 12 volts going to it and clipping it on there and then you can see that the well maybe you can't see on the screen Let's see if I can focus in on that but the uh, the lights not on the timer is just sitting there waiting for the power to go off so when I turn the power off the light turns on and it starts counting down 126 25 etc now this thing keeps power on while it's um, while the power is attached and then after and you don't want your courtesy lights on while you're driving and so I had to add this relay and basically I have it running in uh, normally closed mode and then when I apply power um, to it it goes to yeah so while the power is on this isn't open so the light isn't on and then when you turn the power off this is still on feeding power to the light through the normally closed relay so it seems to do exactly what i want it to do so now i just got to figure out which wire comes from my light switch so i can turn my courtesy lights on when my switch on my light switch is back on and i will have complete functionality back from the stock truck and with an adjustable time so i can make it longer if i want which is really cool um, this thing only pulls uh, 0.01 amps in standby mode, so I'm not too worried about it as a parasitic draw. It should take about 30 days to drain or each battery, so about 60 days for this to drain my batteries. But it is going to be a parasitic draw just like the factory one was, um, and there's nothing you could do about that. And that was actually one of the things that frustrated me about my stock 7.3 was that if you don't start it for a month or two, the battery's dead because it has a computer in the cluster exactly like this that's waiting 
for you to uh, turn off so that it can keep your lights running. So, time to get this all put in the truck. Alright, so I think I got this figured out. So I've got wires that go to my lights. That's like the overhead lights that turn on when you um, shut the car off or do the dimmer switch up, right? Then we've got accessories. And that's things that you want powered for a little bit, like the radio and uh, glove box light, that kind of thing. Got a wire coming from the dimmer switch when you turn it all the way up and click it on that turns on the overhead lights. So with this circuit, what that does is ground out. Um, so I'm using a relay. I'm calling this the runtime relay. And it's getting its power for the coil from my fancy switch, right? So as long as the vehicle's running or in the timeout period after it turns off, um, this relay will be activated and it gets its power from 12 volt constant and then feeds the lights. So that should mean that anytime the truck is running and I flip the dipper's dimmer switch up, my overhead lights come on. And when I turn the truck off, um, they would stay on for however much time I have programmed into this switch. All right, I also have the want for my accessories to turn on anytime the vehicle's on and to stay on for a little bit after it so they get their power from my little fancy switch. And then last, when I turn the truck off, I want my courtesy lights to stay on for the amount of time I have programmed into this switch. So I have another relay and it gets its power from my switch over here. So as long as there's the switch has it turned on, it'll get power. And then it uses the normally closed pin on the relay. So by getting the coil power from 12 volt and run, um, when the truck's running, this pin will not be active. So it'll be getting power to the relay, but not active. Then when you turn the truck off, the coil is going to lose power from 12 volt and run, and then the normally closed will take over, and this will still be getting power for as long as I have it programmed for, and go up and turn the lights on. I'm starting my timer at 130 seconds. I don't know why I picked that number, but it seems long, so we'll see if it works out in reality. Um, the other thing I did was that I went and read the user's manual. Oh, come on, focus. For this little device, and it actually has a low power state where it doesn't light up the backlight on the LED at all, and it takes so little current that I can't measure it. It's 0 .00 amps, so it'll be a very, very small draw, which is phenomenal. Now I just gotta go hook all this stuff up and see if it actually replaces all the functionality of my cluster. I think it will. Let's do it. Well, starting to get a little dark out, but I've made some progress. I've got the highlighted wires done. What that looks like is um, we've got that wire right there coming out to this relay. And then we've got this one right here, which is when you feed power to it, the courtesy lights come on. And it's hooked up to both relays. Um, this is going to be my uh, courtesy light after the ignition goes off. And this is going to be my while the engine's running, making the switch work one. So, my, my next step is going to be starting to figure out where this is going to go in there. And I'm thinking probably just right back there like so. And then hook all the wires up. One at a time. 
And I've got a whole bunch that come off of some of these that I'm going to have to do a bunch of Ys for. So that's going to be really time consuming. But um, I think I can test this first relay by just hooking up the main power to this and then starting the first Y on this and the first Y on this. But may or may not get to it tonight. I don't know. Yeehaw. Well, it is now very dark outside. But check this out. If I turn my switch on, my lights come on. If I turn the switch off, and then I turn the truck off, the lights come on. How cool is that? And I have a countdown timer. And it's working. When I turn the ignition back on, the lights turn back off. I think I can live with it. I've got to figure out why my illumination's not working next. Uh, I don't know what I did there. But I'm pretty happy. Tomorrow I can start cleaning it up. So I just parked and I have courtesy lights. It's so weird after driving this truck for like what two years without courtesy lights and finally figuring this stuff out i uh learned in the process that i don't have running board lights nothing down there so i got to figure out if the wiring's there for those or not because it would be kind of cool to have them um there was also a light listed in the schematic that was oh there it is break the rear lights on okay it said high light truck and I couldn't figure out what light it was talking about but I guess that answers that question so I'm not sure exactly if 130 seconds is going to end up being the right amount of time but um, sure makes it a lot more comfortable to get out here and park the truck in the dark now I'm literally just filming to see if they're ever going to turn off. Cause I haven't actually tested that part yet. So, a minute and 17 minutes into this clip, so it can't be too far from the lights going off. Now I'm kind of curious too if anybody knows what the ideal amount of time to set this timer to is. I don't even know what they are, factory. It might be a minute. Might be five minutes, I don't know. Oh, and there it went. That is just awesome. So this also means that um, you can do this on any old truck. If you have a 70s or an 80s, um, you can use this little module and a couple of relays and you can accomplish time delayed courtesy lights after turning your engine off. And I think that's pretty awesome. Can add a nice modern touch to any old pickup, I think. So we'll catch back up tomorrow when I start cleaning the wiring up. So I'm working on prepping my gauge cluster to get it put back in, and I have all these new lights. Um, I've decided I don't like having my blinkers and stuff on my data screen because <clears throat> it takes up a lot of real estate and. Um, it's actually kind of tricky to get the computer to flash the thing um, nicely. So I'm just going back to good old blinker lights. Um, and then I'm putting in a wait to start light and a high beam light. Um, and then I have a 4x4 and a low light and a check transmission and transmission temperature light that I won't be using until I get this uh, Allison 6 speed and 261 XHD XHD yeah that sounds right um, which actually comes with a selector switch that will let me light up when I'm in 4x4 and when I'm in low which is pretty nice and what I'm doing is I'm using um, just covered blade connectors so that they don't short out on anything and um, in order to make the cluster easy to pull out in the future and put back in I'm color coding each connection so this one's going to be yellow this one will be green 
This one will be yellow and white, uh, white and green, red, etc. And I'm just using electrical tape. Um, and then I'll, whatever wires I do in the dash, I'll uh, tape them with the same colors. So it's just really quick to unplug everything and plug it back in. Um, I need to find the directions on wiring this fuel sender too, because I'm not sure which wire does what. And uh, my backlight has never worked on it, and I'm not sure why. And it's been flaky lately and just not working. And it'll start over. And so I'm going to do a much better job of wiring it in this time. But there we are. This is all prepped and ready to go back in. So the next step is back in the pit, back in the truck. That's going to look pretty cool too. All right. So I got my first lights wired in. Uh, let's turn that off. So my blinkers. That looks pretty cool. Um, and my high beam. That's neat. I like it. All right, so I got the dash put back in, or at least the bezel part with the screen. And now my, I don't know if this will show up in this time of day or not. I have a backlight in my fuel light as well as it working. So that's pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> and I think I already showed all the lights working. And then I started wiring this thing in finally. Uh, up until this point, the only button I've had that was hooked up was this one for turning my power points on and it didn't have the light hooked up now it does but I also hooked up this one which is really cool maybe if I turn my backlight back on no that does not help um, but if I put the car in reverse um, then my backup camera comes on. And if I flip this switch, it flips over to my cargo camera, which is really hard to see. Cargo, backup. That's pretty cool, just by flipping a button. I wanted to do that basically since I got these buttons and just it's been too cold out to get out here and do the wiring. So now I got that wired in. And then I'm gonna tackle my, my mirror heater switch here. I have to figure out which wires in this little plug to hook up to each thing to make it work. I'll tackle that another night. And then I got my exhaust brake um, wired in here, but I need to get it through the firewall and I'm waiting on some, uh, I think they're DT plugs from Deutsch DT or something like that. I don't remember, but <clears throat> I don't want to cut the wires. So I'm going to use plugs. Um, and then I'll get the backlight on that one hooked up. And I originally put these two in for cruise control, but I've recently decided just to keep this cruise control stick on here. I've kind of gotten used to it. And then I can use those two switch locations for something else. So I think at this point I have everything cleaned up enough to put my dash back on, but I'm just too exhausted tonight. So I'll do it tomorrow. And then I can continue um, wiring up these last two switches and then finishing up some cleanup wiring and then I'll be done with this little wiring project. So how exciting is that? Here we go. All right, so I got my upfitter switches all wired in. So when I turn my lights on, I have backlights and uh, the mirror heaters one is white because I wasn't planning on it being a backlight. I was planning on it being a, um, this light is on light, but it turns out the little heater light only outputs five volts and like barely any amps. So I just couldn't get enough power out of it, even using a um, little relay module that, that only takes a couple milliamps. I couldn't get it to light that light up. So I just made it a backlight for now. And then my camera switch is effective and my PowerPoint switch is effective that has an on and then my exhaust brake 
is hooked up to the backlight and I have the wires ran to the firewall, but I still need to do the wiring through the firewall and hook it up before it'll actually work. But at least it's all screwed back in. So my next step is to clean up the wiring behind the radio a little bit and then get my dash bezel put back on. And then I've got some wiring down there I want to clean up and I'll put that back on. And then I'm going to do a little bit more work on this little thing and hook up the rest of these sensor wires and I got a couple wires under the hood yet to do for my exhaust brake and for my wait to start light and then this little project's going to be wrapped up and I'm going to have my overhead light timers working and a whole bunch of other stuff that I've just been waiting for warmer weather to to do so onwards all right so I got my Dash put back on. I got my wires down here cleaned up and this is how many I just didn't need. That's how much extra was in there that I cut out and then I replaced all those quick terminals with either soldered connections or marine grade butt connectors. So I got the panel back on and there's no wires hanging down anymore. That's really cool. So tomorrow I can focus on that but tonight I'm gonna say fuse box wiring cleaned up, panels installed, Tonight's checklist is done. Tomorrow I'll get busy down there. I'm actually going to take that computer, unhook everything, take it inside, and uh, I'm going to re-hot glue a couple of the things that keep coming loose. And I'm going to get some uh, resistors installed for some temperature sensors. And then hopefully get it hooked up tomorrow so that I can display my oil temperature and my water temperature on my dash. But for now, time to go make dinner. All right, it's the next day. It's about seven o'clock in the morning. We can pay certain bills. I want you to address that from your perspective. Yeah, that's a fairy tale. Um... Gloomy. And here's my checklist for today. I've got to do some wiring, some ferrules, some resistor, some Nextian wiring, clean up this little thing on the floor, make it all a little more robust and hook up all my sensors, wires. I'm gonna be putting a USB port in here with a flip switch so I can flip, plug a USB cable in and flip back and forth between programming my dash without having to undo wires. And uh, that's the Nextian wiring. And then I'm going to take that computer board back inside and I'm going to make sure everything's hot glued down really, really well because we're going on a long road trip and I don't want to have any issues. But here we go. Well, I got most of my checklist done except the working part. Everything's wired in fairly neatly even. But... My, uh, it looks like my transmission temperature is working, but my pressure is bouncing all over the place. My oil temperature is just reading 32 Fahrenheit, which means it ain't getting any signal. And so is my secondary water temp. So I can troubleshoot those tomorrow, but for today, I'm pretty happy with the progress I made. We'll see what I figure out about these sensors could be literally that they're just, just disconnected at the source or I pinned them wrong or, or who knows. I'll figure it out, but not tonight. Well, it is now the next day and I finally had the ambition to get in and look at my uh, not working situation, but as you can see, I now have working transmission temperature and line pressure from my sensors. Um, I had to do a Nextian update because I changed the way that I was sending the line pressure. Um, but that was easy enough. And the reason my oil temp and my secondary water temp sensors aren't working is because I don't have them wired in on the engine bay yet, which I totally forgot about. I thought I had that done, but I do not. 
So I'll add that to my checklist when I'm wiring in my exhaust brake under the engine compartment and then run those four wires and then those should work. In the meantime, they're just gonna report 32 degrees because that's the open circuit temperature basically. Um, yeah. So come over to my checklist and I'm going to, this weekend is done. So hopefully my Deutsch connectors get here this week so I can finish up my exhaust brake and those last two sensors and this little project will be wrapped up. All right, it is now the next weekend and it's raining out and nasty and I really need to get this old garage tore down so that I can pull my pickup all the way into my new shop. Because right now I can only pull it in about this far and I have to leave the door open could be worse. So this is my last checklist and then this project will be done. And basically what it boils down to is I've got to get this set of wires <coughs> ran through the firewall. I've got to get this set of wires ran through the firewall and this is for the water temperature and the oil temperature gauges that I forgot that I didn't finish wiring into the firewall. And then I got to find my wait to start wire which I'm pretty sure is that one sticking out right there. Uh, and then wire that into the firewall so that my wait to start light on the dash will work. So it's two, four, nine, ten wires. The first step is getting that firewall connector down there unscrewed. And that's the hardest part of this project. So hopefully this won't take me more than a, an hour or two. It's only 10 wires, right? How hard could it be? All right, I got this little adapter made. Um, it's got the pins on it, so I just have to pin it into my firewall thing and then plug it into this, and then um, my turbo wiring should be done, short of plugging that back in. Then I just got to do my wait to start, oil temp and water temp. Yeehaw. All right, time for the moment of truth. Will my wait to start light come on? There it is. Sweet. Oh, and I have an oil temp, 87 degrees. And I have a secondary water temp, 116 degrees. Oh, this is sweet. I cannot wait to see what my oil temp does when I'm pulling heavy. I also got my exhaust hooked up and it has enough power to power the on light, so that's pretty cool. The only thing I have left to test, I guess, is the USB port for my turbo, but I'm going to assume if this is working, it's probably going to work too. Most importantly, I got my blinkers wired in. I got my high beam wired in. You saw the wait to start. I now have the water temperature as reported from the ECU, which is the 127 on the bottom, and the water temp as reported by the sensor I installed, which is the one on top, it is 113. I also have my oil temperature at 87 degrees. That's pretty exciting. And when I turn it off, I have 130 seconds of courtesy lights. This has been a long couple of week project, but I'm pretty happy with the results. So, see you in the next one.